what's your rate? As per my last email, comma, what's your budget? Circling back on our last conversation, passive aggressive ellipses, what's your rate? I hope this email finds you well during these most challenging times, but I really need to know what's your budget, colon, end bracket. What's your rate? Fine. My rate is $1,000 per day. Wait, can I lock it? No. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, we're in a silly fun mood. I hope you enjoyed that intro. We all have experiences like this with clients in some capacity, and it's all about communication. That's gonna be like the theme of today's video. And I'm going to tell you the story of how we lost a $100,000 a year client. Oh, I didn't want to share this. I genuinely didn't want to share this story for so many reasons, but I'm going to do it because I love you. So to give you some context on this brand, essentially they were hiring us for quarterly projects. Quarterly, four times a year, you get it. And each project would be around $25,000 to $30,000 in revenue. So essentially you do $25,000 times four, that's $100,000 a year from that client. This was by far our best client, our highest paying client. And at that point we had done two years worth of projects. So we had made $200,000 off of them. This was, this, they were the best. I'm just gonna leave you at that. And I, and I messed it up so bad. <laughs> Before I even tell you the colossal failure that was the project that lost everything, I had already primed the client previous to that shoot with another bad experience while shooting. We were literally shooting this winter photo shoot and they had this prototype car and they were like, do not damage the prototype car. It is our only one. And we have so many photo shoots. We are trusting you, Chris, and your team to not damage this thing at all. And I'm just gonna cut to some footage here. That happened. The prototype is in this trailer, and yes, that trailer is in the ditch, and it is partially my fault that the car is there. That's how I primed them, is like I put them through that, and somehow they still wanted to hire us for another photo shoot. Granted, the photos from that photo shoot turned out pretty good. And I did not damage the car. All right, so to give you some context of what the ask from the client was, because we've already done eight of these projects at this point. So typically they want 25 lifestyle photos with culturally diverse models. And they also want five vertical videos that they can make ads with of their car driving around town with the talent doing Toronto tings, which includes getting groceries and going to a Drake concert. I don't know, st stuff that Toronto people do. That's what they wanted. Here, are the early red flags that I did not see, but definitely are now red flags. Number one, they wanted to do an automotive shoot in November in Canada. And I don't know if you guys live here or know about it, but it looks like El Barfo Disgusto garbage here during that time. Trees are dead, snow's everywhere, and it's not like nice snow that you think about when you think about Canada. It's brown, slushy, muddy snow, and it's absolutely horrible to shoot in, and it's so difficult because also the days are shorter. <laughs> Then they told us that we would only have access to the car for two days versus a week, which we normally have. And we would have to shoot it over a weekend because that's the only time the car's available. And then the last thing is like, I know this is a bit of a big ask, but can you do this all in two weeks? We're talking prep, we're talking the photo shoot, and we're talking about editing five videos and 25 photos and having them all ready to go live for the press release that's happening soon. The gut reaction from my business partner, Lizzie, who is also my wife, was like, no, we shouldn't do this. This is a bad idea. Look at all the red flags. And I'm like, and just to be more honest with you and not so jokey, they were literally like dangling $30,000 in front of us. And we were 25 years old at the time. And this was like the biggest client ever. Not only did we want the money because we were hungry for it, but it was a really big client and it meant a lot to us. You always have this fear that you're going to lose the client if you say no to a project. I call this folk fear of losing client. And I was fulking scared that if I said no, we would literally lose them. And the irony is then we lost them. Yeah. So Lizzie and I begrudgingly said yes, but obviously when we emailed them, we'd be like, oh my God, of course we would love to do the project. This timeline window is definitely doable. Thanks for thinking of us again. Love you. Forgot to mention, 
This video is brought to you by Storyblocks. Now, Storyblocks is an all-in-one, there's no way I'm doing it for the whole thing. Storyblocks is an all-in-one platform that allows you to create what you want, when you want to, without sacrificing time, budget, or resources. For example, maybe the thing that you wanna create is a weird Western skit about modern day emails, like we did. Luckily, we had the assets to actually build the whole Western scene. But maybe you have a scene that you wanna do on a pirate ship. I gotta switch my outfit for this one. Or maybe you wanna do it at a zoo. The possibilities are endless. So having unlimited downloads to over a million royalty-free digital assets, such as high-quality footage, illustrations, templates, music, and sound effects with their unlimited all-access plan means that you can create whatever you wanna create when you want to. So head over to storyblocks.com forward slash Chris Howe to check out all their flexible subscription plans. Links are in the description. Thank you, Storyblocks, so much for sponsoring these videos and allowing us to create whatever we wanna create. So the first mistake that I made was cleaning the car. And I know that sounds weird. You're like, oh, obviously you would clean the car for an automotive photo shoot, but it's November. And driving from one location to the next location during slushy season in Canada means that the entire car is now just covered in mud and slush and it's gross. So I was like, okay, let's throw it through a car wash. What do you pay? Let's pay for the best car wash so the car looks the best. And now it was covered in wax and the wax froze because it's negative 15. Now the car is covered in white wax red residue and it was also covered in mud and it took two hours to clean the car on the photo shoot day in the winter and it was the worst experience ever and what I thought was doing the right thing was cleaning the car it ended up just causing more problems and wasting time which compounded into more problems later on. My second mistake was my lack of communication skills as a entrepreneur. One, I'm 25, so maybe that was fair because I was still pretty new to this. But number two, I just, basic communication knowledge was just like out the door in this scenario. So let's give you some context around what happened on the photo shoot. So we had hired culturally diverse models and because they were in demand, we could only get them for like one day, which was the Saturday. And because I already wasted so much time cleaning the car and it was also a perfectly blue sky day, which is so hard to shoot. We only had two hours to shoot with them around sunset when the light was good. So I was like, you know what? Let's prioritize the video. I'm gonna shoot photos on the Sunday and I'll just put my friend Danny and Lizzie Lizzie's also my wife, she's not just my friend. I'm gonna put them in the photos. I'm white. And because I've used them in previous photos with this client, they must like them, so that's great. I don't need to call the client. It's Saturday, they're enjoying themselves. We're gonna get this done. Look at me, I'm solving problems, making things happen. We're getting stuff done. And then the client saw the photos of Lizzie and Danny and they were like, where are culturally diverse models that are super important to us? Why didn't you call us about this decision that you made on site? Because that whole Sunday photo shoot, we don't like any of those photos. Those are out the door. The next mistake that I made was not pushing back on the timeline that they provided us. Like that was just too short of a window to edit all the content. So in our situation, we were like, all right, let's hire a freelancer to help us edit all the photos while we focus on the video. So I like do a call out, this guy messaged us. He's like, here's my portfolio. He had some photos of some Aston Martins. I was like, oh, you've worked with Aston Martin. He's like, most definitely. Look at all this sick Aston Martin work I've done. Turns out he's just edited photos of an Aston Martin, not for the actual client. Doesn't matter, we hired him. And then the photos were due on the Friday. And essentially on Thursday, I didn't give enough buffer time to review this guy's work. So he sent everything on the Thursday and he literally changed the color of the car from red to orange in all of the photos. And then he also put new backgrounds in different cities. This is, this is supposed to be local specific marketing about Toronto. And now it's like Chicago's in the background of these photos. I'm like. Ah! So then on the last second, I had to hire someone else on the Thursday night at 5 p.m. I'm hiring, now I'm hiring someone else to get the photos hopefully ready for the next day. And I'm like, you know what, this is not enough time. So now I'm emailing the client at 5.30 on a Thursday when they're due on Friday saying, can we have an extra day? Can we have the weekend to edit all of this? She's probably not gonna read that email until the next morning, which means that the day she's expecting all the content, she's literally getting an email being like, we suck and sorry, we need more time, which is just not a good look. So now I also had to pay this guy for his bad work and I also had to pay the new freelancer and get more time. So it ate into our margins and made us look bad. <laughs> so the project's done, handed it in, and we get an email from the client afterwards, basically just summarizing some of their feedback from the experience of working with Know How Media and Christopher Howe the Failure. 
And here are some of the things that they said. We really wish that we would have been consulted on the model swap that had happened. You should have called us over the weekend. You had too long with the edits. It messed up our other deadlines and our scheduling on our end. There were issues with the content because you included a lot of copyright material, including Sean Mendez on the radio. I didn't know about that, by the way, but that was just another problem that fell on us. The car was parked in an illegal location. The car wasn't illegally parked. It was actually just a parking lot, but I understand that it probably looked like it was illegally parked. So yeah, we left the client with a very, very, very bad taste in their mouth. And we never got a call from them for the last three years, which means if we calculate $100,000 a year, that means we've lost out on $300,000 worth of revenue because of that one project that we definitely should have said no to. So here is my $300,000 lesson that I learned from all this. Number one, trust your gut. There were so many red flags that we should have just said no to that project. Also, little caveat, Trust your wife and listen to your wife because she knows what's up. And I should have just listened to Lizzie, but I pushed through because I was fucking scared about losing this client. No is a very, very powerful word and people respect it if you set boundaries. So that's a big lesson there. Number two was communication. I made so many assumptions about what the client would like from the shoot and assumptions about how the client would react rather than just like straight up calling them in that scenario, which would have saved so much stress. I would have been able to communicate not through text or emails, but actually just talk to somebody and get empathetic with them about the scenario we were in rather than just having it fall apart like the way it did. So really work on your business etiquette and your communication skills with your client so that you're not losing what is potential revenue in the future. Do you want to take a guess at who the uh, the automotive manufacturer was? I kind of said this at the beginning of this video, but if you know me well enough, you might be able to guess the brand. If you guys enjoyed this horror story and you want to hear more, or you want to hear the other story that I referenced earlier on the video, please let me know in the comment section. And while you're down there, please press like. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future videos, and we will most definitely catch you in another horror story from Chris Howe. I don't know why I became Dracula there. And I'm going to go pet my cat for approximately seven minutes. Bye. Imagine I just left the video going for seven minutes. All you hear in the background is just like. That's my impression of a cat purring, by the way.